the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds a victory. We get to be comfy, we get to eat donuts, and we also get to hear stories of what God has done in our lives this past year, and we call those testimonies, um, but yeah, so it's got a lot of fun because we get to hear all the goodness of God and hear from you, which is so special, and so today you're going to get the opportunity 
to share that. There's mics up front here, and Jay's going to share a little bit more of how that works later on. But be thinking in your mind, uh, what do I want to share? Maybe God's starting to prompt your heart already about a story you need to share with everyone for the encouragement of all of us. But if you are like, man, I would... I would rather die than stand up in front of everybody and share something. You can text me and I'm happy to share the story for you. And the number right there on the screen is 574-500-2506. You don't need to memorize that. That's going to be available during testimony time. So if you are stuck in your seat or if you're online and you want to share, I'm happy to share those for you. I've already got a couple stored up. So excited to hear from everyone today. But I want to say thank you for just a great Christmas time together. Thank you for being a community that values sharing the love of Jesus with our community. It continues to be just so special to me to be in this new space and to be able to come in the bike parking lot and just have all this room to invite. It's just, it's so special to see a group of people so passionate about sharing the love of Jesus and meeting people right where they're at and letting them know they belong before they even believe in Jesus, regardless of what they think, they belong in this community, they belong in this group. And so... I'm grateful for this room that we have that opportunity in this space. And next week, we're going to start... Oh, hi, Connor. We're going to start a new series about the thoughts that we have. It's called Soundtracks. And so we're going to be talking about the negative thoughts that we have about ourselves and our lives and how the enemy uses those against us and how to change those into positive things and see things the way that God sees them. So it's going to be really powerful because it can meet you wherever you're at in your spiritual journey. So if you have somebody that you have been loving on and wanting to share Jesus with, this would be a great series to invite them to because it's going to be very relevant to what they're experiencing no matter where they're at and what they believe. So let's stand together. I want to pray over you. I know we got donuts in hand, but let's stand. Let me pray over you as we get started today. Jesus, thanks so much for the people in this room and online and watching this later, God. Thank you for the love that you have poured into their lives. God, thank you for the joy that you have given us regardless of our circumstances. I pray that today as we get ready to share stories of your goodness, that you would nudge us, God. Help us to listen to your Holy Spirit and to be unafraid. If there's something that you've laid on our hearts to share that's going to be an encouragement to this group, give us the strength and the courage to do it. We want to love one another in that way and build each other up. And God, thank you for this new year. Thank you for being in this new space in a brand new year. Thank you for the time off last week. Thank you that you continue to make things fresh in our lives. Help us to keep looking to you to be renewed and transformed, God. We know that with you, when we're obedient to you, no matter what circumstances come our way this year, God, if we are faithful in following you, this is going to be our best year spiritually, God. And we are so excited for that. We're leaning into that. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. So find somebody around them. Tell them happy 2023. Great to see you again. Just a minute. 
welcome you all again here. You all can go ahead and grab a seat as we watch this video. restores broken hearts, who refreshes tired spirits, who makes all things new. Let our faith and hope be born again today. Help us to let go of the past, to stop looking back and turn our eyes toward you. We are here today in full acceptance of who we've been, but also in hopeful expectation of who you're shaping us to be. Let your love work in us so you can better work through us. We stand ready, ready to embrace all you have for our lives, ready to do your will ready to witness the wonders of your mighty hand, ready to share the redeeming love, the perfect grace, the life-changing salvation you have given us. So today, we lift up our voices in praise to the one who washes away our failures, who wipes away our fear and doubt, to the almighty God who makes all things new. Good morning. Happy New Year. You guys look so good. It's fun to be back together again. We had a little time off last week, and uh, it's good to see your faces here again. As you've been hearing, this is a different kind of Sunday for us. Praise, pajamas, and pastries is what we call it. And um, it's become a tradition. It's been seven years now, I think, we've been doing this, uh, in the, usually the first Sunday of each year. How many of you, this is your first Paste Pajamas and Pastry Sunday? There's quite a few of you. That's great. That's, that's, say that three times really fast, by the way. <laughs> Praise Jim. Um, but we love it. We love, um, we love all of it. We love the pajamas part. And someone said, do I have to wear pajamas? I might just stay home if I have to wear You don't have to wear pajamas. But it's a casual Sunday. We enjoy just being casual. The idea is that we want to be just in a living room together as a family, um, in our pajamas, with our pastries, drinking our coffee, and, and sharing our stories. And we love to worship here. We worship through, through song, but we also worship by sharing what God's done in our lives, by sharing how he's been moving throughout this past year. So we don't get to do this very often. We look forward to the open mic time. Um, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that as we go along, but um, I'm glad you're here. I believe God has something for you. I'm glad you're joining us online as well and watching online. It's exciting um, just to be able to, to see and hear together what God is doing. Two reasons I love doing this. Um, intimacy and inspiration, right? When we share in a vulnerable way with each other about what God's doing in our lives, it has a way of connecting us with each other like a family. Um, and it also inspires. I mean, we had some incredible testimonies in the first service. It was just so inspiring as people got up and, and, and just shared what, what God has been up to in their lives. So I am so excited and looking forward to this. Um, the theme verse, I like to have a theme verse every year we do this. It's praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his faithful love endures forever. Would you read that with me this morning? Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his faithful love endures forever. That's awesome. Um, if you were here on Christmas Sunday, we actually spent some time talking about that word praise. Um, it, it's, it's got a very fun definition to me in the Hebrew. Halal is to shine, to rave or brag, celebrate and be clamorously foolish, uh, to act like a child, you know, to be childish in our excitement of things. And we look at how that phrase, praise the Lord, the Lord is in Hebrew, often abbreviated Yahweh for short, just Yah. So Hallel Yah is where we get this hallelujah. So when we say praise the Lord, it's hallelujah. Uh, and so um, we're going to spend some time saying hallelujah together today. Hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his faithful love endures forever. Um, when, we, when we have a person who shares, we're going to clap, and then I'll say, um, everybody said, and we'll say hallelujah together just as a way of, of putting an explanation point on what God is doing and is giving thanks. Um, I love the, you know, usually when we do this every year, we have a theme verse, and it's usually something from Psalms because Psalms is just packed full of, of such meaningful stuff. For thousands of years, people have turned to the Psalms uh, for comfort and inspiration, 
It really is a, it's 150 songs or poems that were often used in public worship. And um, I think why people are drawn to them is it's not just these superficial kind of, you know, blessing kind of, it, it's, David often was wrestling with some very deep, difficult things. And he's crying out to God in his pain and his, with his questions. And, and yet he found that often in those deepest moments of pain and wrestling, that's when God showed up in the most profound ways. And so this morning, um, as you think about something to share, it could be, man, this is the best year ever, and this is the highlight of my year. Um, It could be, this is the hardest year ever, and this is what I'm learning from what I'm going through. But we just want to invite you to to think about what is your thanksgiving, what is your praise, what is it that you want to highlight. Maybe it's just a word you feel like God has given you for the the church family, um, something that that you're, you're excited about, something that God has done in your life. Um, you can be young, you can be old. We just want to invite you to, to share this morning. What we're going to do is, like I said, there's, there's two mics up front here, and we'll just invite you to come up, and you know, if, you're, if there's more than one person up here, you can, you can stand or find a place to sit until it's your turn. I know it's harder. Sometimes we pass the mic. We're a little bit bigger in this new space, so we're not passing the mic, which means you're going to have to get up in front. You're going to have to climb over people to get out maybe. But it's well worth it to hear what God has been, been doing. So some of you already feel this pumping of your heart. You know, God is some, you know, something that you're supposed to share. Um, some of you came in here saying, I'm not going to share anything, and God's going to prompt you to say something. So those are often the best testimonies. So anyway, I'm going to say a prayer here, and then um, we're going to open, open the mic. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. There's something about just coming together as a family and um, hearing stories about what you're up to. We, we celebrate that you're a God who's always at work in our lives. You care about us that deeply. We sang about you running after us. Um, you're that kind of a God that you care deeply about us and you're at work in our lives. And, and today we want to pause and look back on 2022 and just offer you our thanksgiving, our praise for what it is that you've been up to. And so I just pray over this service. I know you're going to use these stories, these testimonies, uh, just to help inspire um, new things that you want to do in the lives of those who are are listening today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. The question is, who's going to be first? Bev is going to be first. I've been waiting all week <laughs> to be able to share. Okay, so good morning. My name is Bev Esch. And um, at the beginning of December, I was honored to be able to go home to Montana, where I grew up, to, for my mom's 90th birthday. And we were there for five days. My siblings were all there, and we shared a house together and food and germs. And so it came time for me to leave on Tuesday morning. And on Sunday morning, my oldest sister was sick with um, the flu, the stomach bug. And we were kind of hoping that she had quarantined quickly enough, but um, turns out maybe she didn't. So Tuesday morning when we got up, I got up to go home. I was leaving. I left um, Montana at 5 30 in the morning, I think, 5, 5.30 in the morning. Didn't feel great when I got up. I was flying to Salt Lake City. It's about a two-hour flight, so we get down there, and then um, we start to circle. And um, about the second time, well, I didn't realize we were circling because I was trying really hard to just lay low. And the pilot came on, and he said that we were, we were circling because we weren't able to land, and he was going to give it one more try, you know. And so he did that, and then he came on again. Well, we still can't land. We're going to... One more try. So, nope, still can't land. So, third time he came on, he said, we're, gonna, we're being redirected to Denver. Okay, that's fine. I can rest more. So, we fly to Denver, which is an hour and 15 minutes, the, sort of the right way, but not really the right way because they won't let us off the plane when we get to Denver. And so, we sit in Denver for an hour to refuel, and then we fly back to Salt Lake City. But see, I'm okay because I knew I had four hours in Salt Lake City, and I'm not going to miss my flight. Well, guess what? It takes more than four hours to fly back and forth to Denver and sit for an hour. And I get to Salt Lake City, and I now um, have missed my flight, as has every other person on my plane. And so, I looked on the app, and it told me that it was going to reroute me, and I was going to fly to Atlanta beginning that evening at 10.30 at night and fly the red eye and get into Atlanta at 5.30 in the morning or something and then sit there till 10 and then fly home and get home at noon the next day. And I said, Whew. yep, don't feel great. I don't think that's going to be me. And so I looked at my other options, and my other option was to leave 
sooner, but get to Atlanta with a very, very short window to get to my next flight, which I thought, okay, I'm a big girl. I know I don't feel well, but I can do this. And so I chose that flight. Well, when I get there, I see that that flight has been delayed 30 minutes. So now I have a really short window to leave to get to my flight in Atlanta, and that's not going to work. And Dave being, well, he wasn't with me, which was a bummer, but he's trying to help me on the phone, but I don't feel good, and I feel a little bit aggravated. And, well, you know how you feel when you don't feel good, and you're just, people are trying to help you, and I wasn't really digging his help. And so anyways, because he wants me to go stand in line, he wants me to be aggressive, he wants me to get in their face, and like I'm not feeling that. And so um, I go up there, hey, Bev, and I, yeah. I forgot to give a warning that we give about two minutes for these testimonies, so... <laughs> Wondering if you're going to land the plane no. soon. He's, he gave me I, 10 I, seconds I, earlier, and I thought, okay, well, I can't tell this story in 10 seconds, and it is a good story. Okay, so anyways, they get... So I go up to the lady, and she's like, okay, so she gives me some options, and none of them are great, so I stick with my plan, and then I call Dave, and he says, see if they'll take you somewhere else. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Okay, so I get back in line, and then I go and I say, well, could you take me to Chicago? And she's like, do you want to go to Chicago as your final destination? Because she doesn't know geography and where Indiana is in relation to Chicago, I guess. And so I say, yeah, I, I want to go to Chicago. And she's like, okay. So I could leave earlier to get to Chicago, but this whole time I'm feeling tremendously guilty because now Dave has to leave work and drive the two and a half hours to Chicago, which I, for one, would not want to do. And I probably would not have offered to do that for him. But he offered to do it for me. <laughs> And so I feel terrible. Not only do I feel terrible physically, but now emotionally and every other way, I'm feeling terrible because he is leaving work early to drive to Chicago to get me because he doesn't want me to have to go through all this other, you know, sitting in airports forever. But I think that's what I deserve. Is, and, and somehow I felt like I deserved to have to take the red eye and go to S Atlanta and sleep in the airport and then get in at noon the next day and just feel crappy and that's just what I deserve. And, but he was willing to come to Chicago to get me and so I said, okay, I reluctantly, and I know that sounds terrible, dumb, it sounds, I reluctantly agreed, and I flew to Chicago, and he came up and got me, and I got home to my house earlier than I would have originally gotten to South Bend, to the airport. And when I was pondering on that, I thought, you know, why am I so hesitant to accept this gift from Dave? And then I thought, how often am I so reluctant to accept God's gifts for me and his love for me that he really loves me and has gone the extra distance? And this morning in my meditation I had this morning, it said this, say to yourself, this, Christ's death on the cross, this was for me. I am worth the death of Christ. That's how much I'm loved. Amen. That's how much you're loved. Amen. And everybody said, hallelujah. Thank you, Bev. And thank you for letting me poke fun at you. That was kind of fun there. So, um, And I did forget to say, not picking, I forgot to say, try to limit to a couple minutes and say your name if you would to start things off so we get to know who you are. Hi, um, I'm Tina. I want to say that God is good, even in the middle of the hard um, in the middle of the suck. He's good. He's faithful. Um, in 2021, God attacked my husband and I's marriage. He redeemed us. Um, because he is a redeemer. He is good. Um, 2022, Satan decided to attack again with lies. But God is still good. Um, God is still good. He's faithful. Whatever it is that you're going through, I want you to know that God is good. Um, press in. Um, every Sunday, they stand here and say, go and be the church. You guys are the church. Jay and Beth have walked through, my husband and I, through this whole horrible situation that we're living. Um, and each one of you, you guys know anyway. But God is good. God is good, even in the middle of the hard. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. And everybody said, hallelujah. Um,
Not everybody knows what's going on for Pete and Tina, but um, a great testimony that even in the hardest and most difficult things you can imagine, that God can restore marriages and God can um, bring good out of even the, the hardest and most difficult things. So thank you. All right, tell us who you are. I'm Velma Ulrich, and uh, Raleigh and I went on an MDS trip. Uh, we got back December 15th, and we were gone for three and a half weeks, and I was the assistant cook, so to speak. Um, I went with good anticipation. I was going to really have a, you know, a really, uh, I felt like I was really going to put my best foot forward, and I believe I did. Um, I worked with this lady that was the, the cook, and every time I would make a suggestion, she wanted my suggestions, so every time I would make one, she would say, well, yeah, that's, that's a good idea, but we're going to just do something. Um, we're going we're gonna to cook this, or we're going to... And I thought, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to fight. And, I, and so it happened again and again and again. And I thought, okay, that's it. I'm never going to make another suggestion. So... I went to church. Uh, there's a little church there that supports the MDS people, and so it's only right that we would attend their congregation. And the sermon that Sunday was from Ephesians 10, um, or Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, where it talks about uh, spiritual warfare, and it says that we're not uh, supposed to blame people, but the principalities and the powers mm. of the air. And then it, and then he took us to sec, to First Peter five eight, where he says the uh, Satan roll, roams around the wor the world, seeing who he can devour. And I took that to heart. I says those words aren't there just for the heck of it. They're there for me. And Amen. I went back and I said, okay, God, I'm, I'm, my focus is on the wrong thing. I've been mad at this lady, and I'm not going to be mad at her anymore. I am going to say it's Satan, okay? Satan, you get out of that kitchen. I take authority you and, of you in the name of Jesus, and I cast you out. Monday morning, I went into that, ch that kitchen, and that place was a place of peace mm. and she liked my ideas there was a chicken recipe that I had sub <laughs> that I had suggested from the uh, Maple City Chapel cookbook Angie Teeson's Parmesan chicken she said Go, let's do that chicken and we did it she liked it so much that she submitted it to the um, MDS cookbook. <laughs> That's great. I came home feeling very victorious. <laughs> Thank you, Velma. I love that. I love that. that uh, I'll just give a little plug for our soundtrack sermon series. You preached it right there. That there are certain thoughts that can go through our head, and, and boy, God wants to replace them with something else. So, yes. Come on, Dave and Jane. Okay. Oh, yes, and everybody said, hallelujah, thank uh, hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm probably more comfortable in front of a group of first graders than I am in <laughs> front of all of you, but I will try not to uh, get my thoughts all twisted and turned, but we're Dave and Jane Cunningham, and we have uh, a grandson, Riley Cunningham, that some of you have been following, maybe you know a little bit about, but he was airlifted the 19th of December from Memorial to Riley Hospital. And he was a very, very, very sick little boy with some major infections, four of them at the same time. Um, he's gone through a lot of uh, ups and downs, roller coaster in the last three weeks, but he is home. He came home on Friday. Yay. <laughs> Yay, 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 yay. Hallelujah. Um, he's, still, uh, he's still a very sick little guy. He came home to continue his road to complete recovery, complete healing is what we're praying for at home here for the next several weeks. So please keep your prayers going. But a verse I want to share with all of you that God gave me is now to him 
who was able to do immeasurably, and I'm going to insert some words, abundantly, magnificently, ginormously more than we all can ask. We were asking and asking and asking, or even imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. And amen, amen, amen. And he has done for my grandson Riley, for his mom and dad, Heather and Andrew, uh, imme immensely more than we could ever ask or imagine in his healing hand on Riley. Another thing we experienced was the body of Christ. I'm telling you, it was just am amazing to see all of you praying for us diligently, the encouragement, the support that we felt as we walked through this with, with the Cunninghams. We just all say a big thank you and ask you to please continue to pray for Riley for his complete healing. He still has infections and uh, he's getting, um, he's got a port, so he's getting IVs and shots and different things. But a big thank you and a hallelujah to all of you. And, a, and um, yeah, God was in his story. God was in the details. So thank you so much. Amen. And everybody said hallelujah. Um, and let me just add, like, there was two stories kind of going on at the same time when we had Riley was in the hospital there, and then Aiden Omet, some of you know, four-year-old Aiden passed away. And, and so far, two outcomes in those two stories. But let me tell you something. I saw God work in both of those stories and both of those outcomes. And it was powerful to see Aiden's parents share about um, how God showed up. Aiden had had lots and lots of health complications from birth. But the thing I wanted to brag on was, was you as a church showed up in both of those environments to love on those families. And I really, really love the way you guys love on each other when, when crisis comes. So thank you. My name is <clears throat> Jim Chubb. Uh, in 2022, it's a year I don't want to repeat. Let's set my clock here. Uh, I was uh, diagnosed with bladder cancer, as many of you probably do know, simply because your prayers have been answered. I mean, I've gone through a lot of surgeries, but uh, the prognosis is good. And uh, at this point, I'm cancer free. And, uh, I, I realized something over this past year that I'd like to encourage you all with. I know that, I mean, I presided over funerals of people who have passed away because of cancer. And I don't know why we lose friends to it and others walk away from it. But I know this, that the volume of prayers that were offered up for me we kept track, and I mean, they were from all corners. I mean, friends, family, uh, co-workers, people that I didn't even know very well, but they were praying for me. And uh, the surgery I went through was 100% successful. Um, I'm totally different on the inside, but that's okay. Uh, but the Lord is faithful, and he's faithful to the, because of multitudes of prayers. So let me just offer this to you. The Lord is faithful. He hears every one of us. And the, the thing about it is that when we lift prayers in multiplied numbers, not to make it small, but to say that God hears. He hears everything the multitudes cry out. There's testimony after testimony in the Bible about that. So... I guess I would offer to you, we may not have an answer. We are all going to go at some point. But the Lord has spared me, and I am exploring what that reason is. So if there's anything to pray for, be praying for that, because I want to be useful. I want to do something with the life that he's extended for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And everybody said, hallelujah. I thought it was interesting, your comment, Jim, that I'm different on the inside. That probably has multiple meanings, right? Amen, amen. 
Uh, hello. <laughs> um, my name is Brayden. I am 10 years old. Uh, so, like, this week, um, or no, last week, uh, we went to a funeral because someone that was in our small group, they, they are, they're, um, their child had a lot of conditions, and when he was four, he actually died, sadly. And so last week, we went to his funeral, and after we went, or when I saw the child, I saw, I heard from God something, or God, that child will be put to good use. And I just knew that that child would have a special place in heaven. And so you, what I'm trying to say mainly here is no matter how um, bad things are, just know that God will work it out and everything will be fine no matter what happens. You can die and you'll still have a nice time in heaven. Nothing that, nothing, um, that, nothing that's bad is God's fault. It's Satan. Satan tries to hurt our feelings. Satan tries to put us down. Satan does this, does that. Satan is the only bad thing ever since Adam and Eve ate from the tree, um, after Satan convinced them. God didn't care who did it. He just cared that they did it. So then bad was put into the world. So all I need you guys to know right now is that whatever happens, God will help you get through it. Amen. <laughs> and everybody said, hallelujah. Might be a future preacher there somewhere. See your protege right there. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if I'm qualified to follow that, but uh, that is my son. Um, so I set some goals for myself in 2022, uh, just how I wanted to conduct myself uh, personally and in my marriage. And uh, I got kind of frustrated. And uh, one of the Sunday mornings during praise and worship, uh, that seems to be a time where God likes to give me a word. So I just want to share that. Um, it may apply to you often when God gives us a word. It's not just for us. So he said, uh, Galatians 6, 9. So let us not get tired of doing good. At just the right time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. And so uh, that was back on November 6th. Um, he said in 2023, you will reap a harvest of what you've been sowing. So let me just repeat that. Galatians 6, 9. So let us not get tired of doing good. At just the right time, you will reap harvest if you don't give up. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And everybody said, hallelujah. All right, so I have two, but I'm going to be really quick with both. <laughs> First of all, um, probably, I think it was like seven years ago, I think seven, Chad Peachy, um, came up to me after church and tears in his eyes just said he had a word from God for me and he spoke that over me and I, I'm a really intentional person so when I got home I was like can you just email that to me because I didn't quite understand how that really was working in my life at that point so he did and I have kept that and I have reread that every once in a while through the years and just went, yeah, no, I don't get it, God. <laughs> like, I don't know what that message has to do um, with me yet. But this year, God really brought that to fruition. And I just want to say, I mean, I've, I've told Chad personally, thanks, but um, just an encouragement as a church body that maybe God will give you a word that seems really strange or weird and you don't exactly know what that means. But... Um, stick with that because in the future that could totally come about and and it's just been a really great year for that. Amen. 
Um, second of all, I brought my husband. So, oh, sorry, I'm Angie Teeson, Micah Teeson. I'm not I, Candy. <laughs> um, Angie is the one with the chicken recipe. That we, chicken yeah, recipe. So there we go. Chicken Parmesan. <laughs> um, in the same, in that same kind of spirit as that last story, is that we celebrated 20 years of marriage this November. <laughs> And those have been some really hard fought years for our marriage. And I just, I see marriages all around me crumbling and it's, it's just hard work, but so worth it. And so I feel like God's word for Micah and I this past year has been love over fear and that it's not that fear is going to disappear, it's going to still be present, but that in those moments where you're fearing, if you choose love over that, there will be blessings that cannot happen any other way. And that has not been something true for myself in our marriage that I have always chosen love over fear. A lot of times fear wins. Um, and this year has just been a consistent year where I've seen God use his love and, and make that overcome my own fears. So it's been a really good year for that. Um, not anything out of the ordinary, really, just kind of a normal year, but um, it, it has led to excitement for what our marriage will be uh, in the future. Amen. Amen. And everybody said, hallelujah. I'm Ryan. This is my daughter, Kinsley, and she asked if she could share something with you. I invited Jesus in my heart. <laughs> Ryan is uh, on staff here as our executive pastor, and uh, it was fun a few weeks back to get a a Slack message from him saying, Kinsley accepted Jesus tonight, and we all got to celebrate. I'm going to get emotional here. We all got to just celebrate with him. There's nothing like a parent when, when you get to celebrate that with your child, so that was, that was fun. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> this is a message from Ira Mullet, and he says, in 2021, I lost my wife to cancer, leaving me with three children. Although this was the most trying and painful time of my life, I have been blessed in ways unimaginable. I am now engaged with a wedding in the near future. I never imagined to find love like this after the pain I went through. 2022 has been amazing and full of blessings in the midst of working through grief. Praise him always. We are excited to go down this journey with a blended family. God bless. And everyone said, hallelujah. Who else? <laughs> Hi, Jay. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's kind of nerve-wracking. I haven't seen, yeah. Oh, there she is. Hi, Lori. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where Lori was. Okay, um, some of you, may, my name is Grace. I have been attending Maple City for about six months now. Um, yeah, woo <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, yeah, uh, I said there's, like, so much on my heart today. Um, <laughs> well, first off, <laughs> sorry, I have to get my tail already. It's okay, Grace. Um, so this is kind of hard. Um, so 2022 was sort of a hard year for me. Um, I was just struggling with things personally with like, um, yeah, just like personal stuff that we all have and we all have struggled with. Um, cause I was just coming home from Missouri for about six months to work on myself spiritually and just to, um, like get healing from like trauma from my past and just different problems I had and I was looking for a church in 2022 because I was like leaving my old church and it was just so weird because God brought Lori Yoder into my life Hi, Lori. <laughs> and um it's just crazy what God can do for just like the littlest things in life and it's it's just crazy because after he brought Lori into my life um I started coming here I think Lori was one of the first two people I met his well I have a friend Cassie here we work together and then there's Lori came up to me and was telling me, like, oh, yeah, you need to meet Hannah Shetler. And I was just, I was, like, going through all these things in my mind. I was like, oh, 
another girl, yay! <laughs> but then I didn't realize, trying to connect dots, and I'm like, oh wait, that's Jay's wife. That's not Jay's wife, Jay's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like really cool because then she kind of introduced me into the young adults group, which was like crazy because like I met like so many of you guys, and you guys are just like awesome. And it's hard because a lot of people see me as like the happy-go-lucky girl, like, oh, she's always smiley, she's always bubbly. But you know, it's hard because sometimes I have to put that mask on because I'm struggle. I like I struggle so hard on the inside of my heart, and um, it's just it's just crazy because um, I actually got to sit down and talk with Lori probably after two times I met her and I actually told her my story and we were sitting there for a couple hours and it was like great because I was just like I can like literally see God in this woman it's just like just crazy things happen when I like, talk with her and stuff and I just feel like after meeting Lori and then like starting to come to like a church that's just 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 like so big and it's just like had so many people like come up to me like on like my first or second week and I was like oh my gosh I'm a people person but this is too much I can't do it I can't do it but it's just, it's just crazy because, um, and then I got to meet some of my new friends, um, Beth and Preston, and they're, no, they don't come to this church, but um, they were here this morning, which is funny. And it was just, it's just crazy because I just feel like day by day, God is just bringing new people into my life just to work on things. Even, even if it's just like the little minor thing, like, oh, I saw the littlest line, I just need help overcoming it. And then it's just, also God has shown me through Preston and Beth that like laziness is like something that's big in my life about like trying to spend time with God personally. Mm. And we started, like we're doing this devotion called like Prayer Killers. And it's, it's like really great. And it's on the Bible app. If you guys, I think it's for everyone. I don't know. I think it's just created. But it's just, it's just crazy because, <laughs> it's just crazy because I feel like this new year, I mean, I've already started struggling with some things with um, a couple of friends and stuff. But it's just like, I posted something the other day, and I'm like, you know what? Life is full of negativity, but if we just choose positive, if you choose the positivity in life, like, God's just going to show you all these little blessings through life. And I just want to encourage that to, like, everyone. Just, like, when you're feeling lazy in your relationship with God, just stop what you're doing and just talk to him because it is, like, the most amazing thing ever. So, awesome. I just can't wait to see what the new year brings for me and just for everyone in here. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. And everybody said, hallelujah. Um, I want to brag on Lori just for a second. Um, but Lori does inner healing prayer here at the church. And, and many of you have experienced the, the benefit of that. And if you haven't, and you're wrestling with stuff from your past, there's, there, there's few things that are more healing than spending time with Lori because Lori helps take you to the presence of Jesus. And there's nothing quite like bringing Jesus into our pain and our trauma. So thank you for what you do, Lori. Uh, hi, my name is Janae Stoltz. Um, so the beginning of my 2022 uh, was basically just closed doors everywhere. <laughs> um, I tried to go to college like four times, <laughs> um, and just every single time it just didn't work, um, mainly because of like financial issues and then like my grandpa getting really sick and I just had to be home. Um, and then I also was just in a very um, unhealthy situationship at home. Um, and just like really looking for like a way to get out. Uh, and then I went to camp as a co-counselor with Annette. Um, and uh, there was like a lot of stuff going on in that specific week. Like I got the call that week that I couldn't go to the next thing that I had planned. Um, and so we were just sitting talking and I was like, I don't know what else I'm to do. Like <laughs> there's nothing else for me, I'm just giving up. And she, I thought she was joking, she wasn't. <laughs> but she was like, why don't you just come live with me? Um, so then fast forward a few months, September, and I'm living with them. <laughs> um, and yeah, since I've lived here, it's been a lot of opportunities given to me. Um, and just, I've learned like what the word family means and like how to love and yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And everybody said, hallelujah. Couple more. Hello, my name is Sharon Myers, and the testimony I have is not nearly as fun as Bev's. 
but um, it goes along with what Angie was saying about how God can bring to fruition um, something that he's spoken over you years before. Um, as a little girl, probably early to mid-grade school, I felt God speak something to my heart that he wanted me to be a missionary. And it just seemed like it had to do with this Spanish-speaking country. So, um, and I wanted to be a nurse, so I went and I got schooling and I practiced as a nurse for 45 years. But during that time, life happened. Um, it's not something I'm proud of and I really struggled with for many years, but I had three children and two divorces. And Satan used that to make me feel like God couldn't use me anymore because of what had happened. But I'm here to say that he does work Amen. things for good for people that love him, for people that are called according to his purpose. And when I was about 60 years old, I remember telling my small group, I know now what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> um, after all those years, I just felt called to be a nurse practitioner, to go to school for that. And I want to tell you, that was not easy at 60 years old. Computers had come around, programs that I didn't know how to use. But God was with me. Um, in 2019, I started the nurse practitioner program at IUSB. Um, shortly after that, my father got very sick and died. And a few months after that, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So... Schooling, in addition to the mental and academic work, was very hard emotionally. Um, at the time, I didn't know whether I could keep going to school or what purpose it would be because in my mind, it was just kind of a death sentence because of family history of that. But God is good, and he had a plan, and he had a purpose, and he brought me through. Um, the reason that I went on for study at that age was because I, I wanted to use it toward medical missions. And it's amazing how God has, I'm 67 years old now, um, and I'm fighting age-related things, so I tell God, you know, he better hurry up and, and <laughs> do what he wants to do with me because my body isn't cooperating like it used to. But... Um, I was hired at a clinic in Sturgis, Michigan, where the couple that owns the clinic are Christians. So they really support my mission-mindedness. Um, I got invited to be part of um, an organization out of Salt Lake City called Healing Nations, who does work in Guatemala. Um, and I've been there about four times, and I'm going again at the end of January for two weeks. They've also asked me to do their telehealth clinics every Tuesday, so I've been doing that. Awesome. Um, and I have plans this year to try and go to, uh, with Samaritan's Purse, perhaps to Zimbabwe or, or somewhere for a little bit of a longer-term mission. So I just say that for people who feel like there's a call from God, but they haven't seen it come true. And like Angie, they don't really see how that applies, but he will, he'll bring it about um, in his time and his way. Amen. Thank you, John. <laughs> and everybody said, hallelujah. Love that word that um, our past doesn't have to, to keep us from, from being used by God. And it's good you finally grew up and are living out your calling. Here. This is Ryan. And um, so it started when it was about like. 
two days ago or so. Uh, I had a really rough day at school, and because I knew that uh, I wasn't doing right, and then a couple hours later, I uh, knew that I wasn't letting Jesus into my heart, and it was sitting, Satan sitting there. So I decided to let Jesus into my heart, and then the very next day, and um, I realized that Jesus was in my heart and that I did a very right thing and let Satan out. And um, I, in the very next day, I had a perfect day. <laughs> and everybody said, Hallelujah. Hi, my name's Melody Malik, and I'm kind of, I've only been here a few months, so I had no idea what praise pajamas and pastries was, and <laughs> not about the testimony, so I had no idea I was going to do this, so I actually gave my testimony at Blue Christmas, so, but I'm not here to repeat what I said, um, to give you the short version, um, my husband of almost 27 years left, um, left a little over a year ago, our divorce, divorce was final in December of last year. So, um, well, 20, it's been a year. <laughs> Anyways, um, I guess what I'm here to say is there's two things that I wanted to share. And the first is his provision. Um, I hadn't worked in like 23 years. I had been a stay-at-home homeschooling mom, so I was not working. We had just moved here from California. We'd been out there for 14 years. And needless to say, you come out here, and we came out here in the summer, and we had sandals. We don't have coats. We don't have any of those things. And my <laughs> husband left, and I have no money. And there's so many more things I could, and how God's provided, I can't even begin to mention all of them. But one of them, like, I mean, I had, we had, like, no winter coats, and people just started giving us coats. Now we've got, like, so many coats. We're like, where do we put all these? Um, <laughs> We have like sandals. Well, we work at a shoe store. <laughs> so, um, you know, we work at Woldrifts. So now we've got great shoes, not, not my bunny slippers that I currently am wearing. <laughs> but um, the other thing is, is after you go through a divorce, you feel like you're a worthless, you're a piece of trash, nobody wants me, you know. Um, but I'm here to say you, I have learned my worth and I can't. Amen. You cannot allow anyone, you cannot allow the enemy to tell you who you are. Amen. Um, there is only one that can do that, and he is faithful, and he is, he will never hurt you. He will always be there, and he will never betray you. He can't. That's not who he is. So just, just put your trust in him, and he has been so faithful. So I just wanted to give God the glory. Amen. <laughs> And everybody said, hallelujah. We have two more here, and then I think we're going to wind down. So go ahead. All right. My name's Destiny Schrock. Um, and you know how people always talk about their spiritual highs and spiritual lows? Um, and at the B, halfway through my final year of college, um, right at the beginning of 2021, I was at a, spirit, a spiritual high. I felt closer to God than I'd ever felt in my entire life, and it was amazing. Um, and by the end of that semester, I was at the lowest point I'd ever been in my life. And as I went into that summer, um, the biggest thing I was dealing with was shame, because I felt like it was my fault that I had fallen so far. And to an extent it was, like I had chosen to walk away from God and I felt so much shame for that and just this complete sense of self-loathing. Why, why would you do that? How could you do that? And, and on top of that, how could God ever take me back? And so the rest of 2021, um, I guess I started the healing process um, I started going to counseling and kind of worked through some of those things. And in the fall, um, I started working at 
um, Clinton Christian as a music teacher. Um, and I wanted to get back to where I had been with God. Um, I wanted to get back to where I felt like God was my friend and where I could feel his presence and I could actually have conversations with him. Um, but it was just really, really hard because um, I had that, that roadblock of this shame and still not truly believing that God could really take me back after I'd chosen to walk away from him. Um, okay, so fast forward to August of 2022. Um, I decided to go to a Bible study because one of my friends had invited me. And this was a really, really big deal for me because I hadn't been hanging out with a lot of people. And I think that was mostly because of the shame that I'd been feeling. I felt like I was such a, a horrible, ugly person on the inside and I didn't want anyone taking the chance of finding that out. So it was a really big deal. I went to this Bible study and we were going through Revelation. So I was like, okay. Um, and the Bible study was great, but again, like I felt like I was just taking notes and not really feeling anything. So afterwards, um, I saw that one of my friends who I'd known for almost my whole life um, was there as well, and we hadn't gone together. She was the, like, this only, there was two people I knew there, and she was the other one. And so afterwards, we were kind of just sitting and talking and catching up, and um, it was really good to see her. Um, and we noticed this guy kind of lurking around the back of the room, and I didn't really say anything, but he approached us and said, listen, I am a prophet. And he turned to my friend and said, I have a word for you. And he shared a Bible verse and prophesied over her life and kind of spoke into the exact thing that she'd been telling me about. And I'm sitting there watching this like, this is amazing. Um, I was like, I wish God would do something like that for me. But the literal thoughts that went through my brain were, he can probably tell, he can probably sense the darkness in my soul, so he wouldn't have anything for me. He can probably tell that my relationship is like fake right now, so he wouldn't have anything to share. And this prophet finished talking to my friend and he laid a hand on both of our shoulders and prayed over her and then he walked away and I was like, wow, that was awesome. And we kind of like talked about that for a little bit and um, maybe an hour passed, we were still talking, it's like 11 o'clock at this point. Um, and he comes back into the room. And again, he's just kind of standing there in the back. And then he walks right up to us and he looks me dead in the eye. And he says, this has never happened before where I've had two prophecies in one night, but I have something for you as well. And I was like, what? No way, are you sure? And um, I will never forget this. He looked me dead in the eye, did not break eye contact and told me the verse of um, he who has began a good work in you will carry it out into completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm. And immediately, like, tears in my eyes, and he, he looked like, felt like he was looking straight into my soul. He's like, does that mean something to you? I was like, yes. Mm. And so what I want you guys to get from that story is that even when it feels like God is so far away, you can't feel him, you haven't seen him, he is still there watching over you, looking out for you, and he has a plan for you. Amen. And everybody said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Worship band, why don't you guys go ahead and make your way out here as we're hearing this last testimony. I'm Aubrielle Peachy, and my sister was a stillborn a year before I was born. And... I had stomach problems for two years, and um, I had a really hard time with it, but um, we found out that it was currently how I was dealing with my grief, and um, God has helped me through all of that. Mm. Amen. thing I love about the, the sharing and testimonies is how, like I said in the beginning, God is moving, and it doesn't matter your age, right? The Holy Spirit's going to show up, and sometimes it's not in our timing, and it's not exactly how we think it will go, but God is alive. He cares about you, and he's moving, and uh, I, wish, I wish we had more time. I'd love just to hear more and more of your stories, but we're going to 
wrap up with a song here called A Thousand Hallelujahs. And it's our effort just to, again, sing praise to God and thank him for what he's done. I want to invite you to stand, if you would, with me, and I'm going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the, the stories and the testimonies of what you're up to. And I know that this was just a small portion of all the things. I mean, one of the things I love about this is that, you know, we look around and we greet each other on Sunday and everyone, we, we, it's easy to say, well, your life looks perfect and your life looks perfect. And we don't realize the struggle that's going on all around us. And we also don't realize the way you're showing up in such profound ways all around us. So today we just celebrate those ways. We celebrate the way that you show up. Um, and the way that you make yourself known. And I know there are folks here today who may be really in a dark place and saying, well, I'm desperate for God to show up in my situation. And God, one of the things you say in Scripture is that your mercies are new every morning, that we get a fresh start, and, that, and we just pray that over those situations that are the darkest right now, that you would come. And as we go into 2023 here, that, that we know you will continue to move. And so we just reach out in faith. We, we hold on to you with the hope and the belief that you will come and do what only you can do, God. And as we sing this last song, God, we just want to pour out our our gratitude, our thanksgiving, our hallelujahs to you for all that you've done and all that you will continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
so good. I'll just say amen and amen to that. That was incredible. It speaks for itself. God's goodness. And there's something about stories that breeds more stories. So if you felt like, man, I had a story to share, you don't have to leave. Our prayer team's up here. They'd love to pray with you and hear your story. You've got family to talk to on the way home. Maybe your kids want to share. We heard from a lot of kids today. Encourage that. Keep sharing stories. Keep telling stories of God's goodness because that's the soundtrack that runs through our brains when hard times come. So, shameless plug, come back next week. Let's talk about soundtracks and keep walking through this story and this journey together in 2023. Guys, we love you. Thank you for sharing. Go and be the church.